All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I'm gonna try to get through this as quick as possible. This will be my second time trying to record tonight. I lost all 45 minutes of my last footage, and it's now almost 10 o'clock. So I'm gonna try to blow through this as quick as possible, make it informative, and still try to get this video out at a decent hour. If you tuned in last week, we had U calls on watch, did really good, broke out of that downtrend, ran about 10%. It is now at 18, about 18.36 is a big resistance you're definitely going to want to watch that if it cannot break that it may reject lower that 1836 is key for higher prices we also had dia puts on watch pulled up into supply had a little bit of trouble rejecting did have one day inside supply where it rejected but overall it is starting to work through that supply zone you can watch that all-time high res area if it wants to reject there you could definitely look at that area for a rejection but right now no big rejection signal nothing really signaling lower prices at the moment so that one really didn't play out but you can definitely watch that level it could still see some downside if it rejects at all-time highs we also had wmt on watch wmt we went ahead and entered we are now down 18 percent on october puts i took it right at that trend line resistance and it's kind of chopping at that area we did have a little bit of green it was up like 15 percent and then it kind of worked its way back up it's not really in that distribution phase yet there's not really any supply or sellers just yet but overall it's still pretty overbought and it could start seeing some sellers eventually all right not two trades last week we took wmt puts we only took three last week you can see wmt puts we took the 75 for october we do have the machine learning filter showing us a 74 percent chance of being profitable it did go in the green about 15 percent right now down about 18 percent we have two months left so no biggie we also took spy 557 calls took a scalp made about 23 percent on that also took 558 calls another scalp about 21 percent on that really all we did was trade against this open spy 550 put position we have open right now so it made back a little bit of pnl from this loss that is unrealized at the moment so i'm staying in this spy 550 put i only have one contract we made a little bit back on that so that kind of canceled out a little bit of the red i'll probably keep trading against it with calls if i see the market is bullish i'm not really biased i'm not really worried about doubling down on this i don't like to add to losers i'll just trade against it try to make some of the money back while keeping it open staying hedged on the market so only three trades open last week one open swing that is fresh that is wmt and another one a couple weeks ago spy 550 put all right now to the economic calendar we only have one important thing on tuesday it's going to be consumer confidence not really worried about durable goods orders or fed dolly she doesn't really move the market we also have nvidia earnings on wednesday along with a Raphael bostic speech it's going to be after hours but most importantly it's going to be nvidia earnings it's going to move the market huge more than likely thursday we have initial jobless claims you can definitely pay attention to that i don't think the impact is really going to be that high but you can definitely pay attention most importantly is going to be that gdp it's going to be at 8 30 definitely want to pay attention to that and then on friday most importantly is going to be pce this is the fed's preferred inflation gauge you want to see that continued trend and in inflation lower we want to see it coming in below forecast or right in line so we want to see that 0.2 the 2.5 and the 0.2 either all in line or a little bit below that for all three we also have consumer sentiment at 10 that can definitely move the market and also a pmi reading at 9 45. So the three most important things will be the NVIDIA earnings. We have PCE and also GDP. Second most important, probably consumer confidence consumer sentiment and also initial jobless claims so a pretty stacked week i would say definitely for pce gdp and nvidia earnings all right now to the seasonality real quick we do have winning trades at 90 percent with a summarized profit at eight percent for the 10-year data set looking pretty bullish over the last 10 years has won nine times out of 10 20-year data set we're sitting at 75 percent winning trades with a summarized profit at nine percent so pretty bullish for the 10-year and the 20-year data set we might close out the month very strong we'll have to see how that goes definitely high probabilities for the both all right now to our setups we'll go over tesla real quick we do have a nice downtrend breakout we have a test one a test two test three rejection now starting to break out of that you can see we pulled into it holding the back test with this one bar looking pretty good to maybe pop higher you can see we briefly went under the trend line kind of went back within it but now starting to get back over it it is holding up pretty good short term time frames kind of choppy like you have pretty big res right here at about 224s and then you have another res point 228s might need to watch those as well but otherwise in the higher time frames looking pretty good holding this breakout you can see we based off the moving averages very good we have the 9 21 50 all in the same spot holding and bouncing off that we're back over the 200 ema which is the dots you can see the dots here that is the 200 day macd is also positive so looking pretty bullish it might need to get over those short-term levels that i just panned out at the 
224s and the 228s. Above that, you have a pretty big gap. So as long as we're holding, looking pretty good, holding the breakout, all that good stuff. And really with this type of setup, the risk off is really easy. Your stop loss would be if it starts going back within the downtrend line, breaking under that. If you broke under the 50 EMA as well, which is like 212s or something like that, starts closing back under that 50 EMA or the 200 EMA, it's probably going to go invalid. So Tesla looking at calls, probably just day trades. I don't really know how I feel about a swing on this at the moment, given how the market sells off in September. I don't think I'm going to go long really for any names in terms of a longer term swing trade, unless it is very discounted. Like I really liked you last week. You did pretty good. And there's other like interest rate sensitive plays that are still pretty oversold that could have some more room to run. But otherwise, large caps and stuff that moves with the index could have a pretty weak September. So we'll see how that goes. But Tesla looking at calls, mostly just day trades looking pretty good holding breakout all right number two on to google another breakout play holding the back test test one test two test three i have alerts set on the inside bar high and low so we have the high and the low of this inside bar this would be the mother bar you can see isb low ISB high. So we're going to wait for that ISB high to get taken out. If we start breaking over 166, there's a pretty good chance we can run a little bit higher here. Looking pretty good. And just like Tesla, you can see if we start going back within the downtrend, that's kind of when the setup could go invalid. So you want to watch that downtrend. Make sure we're staying outside of it. Make sure we're staying broken out. And that could be pretty good for some upside. We probably will need to get over this one day 921 EMA cloud as well. So this little red area has kind of been turbulence. It's kind of been struggling there. We need to get over that. If you can get over that, you can get up to the 50 EMA right here at about 170. So Google looking at calls, day trades over 166. That is the inside bar high. I want to see a breaking out of that right there. We also have MACD positive. So that's a good sign as well. As long as MACD is holding, there's some chance it could get some momentum here. Really just need to get over that ISB high. Can get up to the 50 EMA so on and so forth just make sure it's you know holding the breakout and it should be pretty good for right now but looking at day trades on this probably no swing trade at the moment google looking pretty good just needs to get over that 166 level all right for number three we're going over fxi you can see it's a pretty clear breakout setup same as tesla and google risk off will be really simple if it starts going back within the downtrend you could probably stop out you also have a pretty good base out here so you can see the 9 21 ema combo the cloud is green you have the 50 ema and the 200 ema kind of all in the same spot that's where it kind of based and bounced right there so as long as that base is holding fxi looks pretty good obviously this is a chinese etf so it's going to move with the chinese large caps probably like baba baidu stuff like that it's pretty subject to volatility so lots of gap ups and downs and that makes it a little bit harder to trade so you probably want to go with october expiration minimum might even be smart to go with january or December to catch those good consumer spending months, you know, November, December, January, those are all pretty good for holidays and consumer spending. But overall, as long as we are holding outside of this downtrend, looking pretty good to go up a little bit higher, you have a gap right here and some room up to 27.60. So FXI, I do like this one as a swing trade, just buy time on it. Like I said, large caps like Tesla and Google, a little bit more sensitive to the indexes, which might have a rough September if we follow the September seasonality to the T. And forgive me if my voice sounds weird. I spent 45 minutes recording my last clip and it got deleted. So my voice is just fed up with me and I'm trying to get this done at a reasonable hour. I still have to edit, upload, type out the trade ideas list for people who don't watch and all that good stuff. So, all right, now to the indexes. We're going over the SPY real quick. So last week we really just focused on 455. I wanted to see a pullback from there. It just did not happen. First thing Monday, we broke out of it, closed over it. It did make good support and a good back test level here on Thursday. If you zoom in here on Thursday, you can really see the back test off 555. Really nice upside. We do have a new supply zone you're going to want to mark. This is a drop base rally zone. It starts at like 463 and goes up to 465 or so. This base candle specifically, you're going to want to mark. So that's your new supply zone. And this is kind of your trading range. And that's really the only levels I have for you right now. What we do at the supply, I have no idea. VIX is kind of low. So not really expecting too big of a pullback, but we kind of have been stalling out every time we tapped it. Big rejection and another rejection on Friday. So this supply is probably worth a little bit to pay attention to just off the fact of those short term rejections. Otherwise, I can't really be bearish until we're under 555. We start closing under 555. I could definitely see this buy imbalance and this gap filling. But right now at all time highs, not a good area to go long. And at the same time, don't really have a short signal to trade puts at or anything just yet. What this 
see how Monday goes, but this area is a little bit sketchy. So if you want to try scalping puts at this area, I feel like that opportunity could come up this week at some point, some type of short-term rejection, and it could make a good scalp. But we'll have to see how that goes. Otherwise, my favorite area to buy dips, obviously 455 back down here at that area. That is kind of the back test, old res turn, new support stuff like that it's a pretty good area to look for dip buys and then for nasdaq or qqq we were looking at 475 last week i was kind of hoping for a rejection kind of make that inverse head and shoulders reject here make the second shoulder you got a shoulder head shoulder i was kind of hoping for that scenario we haven't really gotten that so might not play out but overall once it broke over that 475 that takes you to the next kind of peak area and that was at 484 43 or this little rejection zone that led to this big down candle right here we could even zoom in i'll show you real quick here's that rejection the first one at 484 40s right here and then your second on thursday which is a very big one off of that 484 43s and then here's your back test at 475 it's kind of like the spy 555 it kind of back tests this area right here got back over it nice bullish momentum came back down again bounced off 475 right there so that's kind of your range right now 484 40s probably just mark 485 as well down to 475 so that's your trading range this will be your area to look for rejections kind of like spy at supply and this is your area to look for support or bounces at 475 i really can't get bearish until qqq is back under 475 it's that simple look at this we kind of had a close under 475 but the next day we had follow through holding it up etc so you really need to see that close plus the follow through the next day to actually get a bearish signal one close under the level may not be that good you can also see both indexes spy and qqq both trending over their 921 ema combo as you know i don't short into the moving averages i wait for them to break or i wait for a very large extension like a big gap between the 9 ema and price like if qqq were to get up to 495 right now and the 9 ema is only at 475 that's a pretty big extension and it's probably going to come back down to catch back up with the ema as you see right here big gap between price and ema resulted in drawdown big gap between price and ema right here big drawdown stuff like that otherwise you want to wait for it to break under the ema as such so we're trending over everything important basically over the 50 over the 921 over the 200 this was your discount zone back at the 200 ema to kind of dip by trade back up to the ema once it got to the ema you kind of got to be careful because it could reject but once we start closing back over the ema you can start going long again and that's kind of what it's showing you right here but yeah that's really it just the 484 40s which is this right here and then 475 50s that's your peak right here support right here there is free space over 485 or that peak right here up to all-time high you also have a gap right there as well so for some reason next week we can start closing over 485 that is a pretty bullish signal to start filling back up kind of like what spy did over 455 here's when it closed over 455 it kind of gave you that free space up to all-time high area likewise for qqq if it stays over 485 or starts getting over 485 there is free space to get up to that area so nasdaq's a little bit lagged spy is closer to all-time high obviously spy is more broad has more industries more sectors qqq all tech-based basically reliant on semiconductors and other spaces right now semiconductors are dominating the most market cap if you draw out fibs too you do have the 78.6 which is at 486.20 just right here that could also act as a res area could reject at that area as well it did it back in october over here so the last time we had a very sharp sell-off you can see it lasted all the way through mid-august we bounced in august and then towards september 1st we rejected that 78.6 very aggressively so it's kind of similar to the pattern we have now very sharp sell-off v recovery we get up to the 78.6 now we have to kind of see is it going to reject the 78.6 now kind of like back in October of 23, or are we just gonna keep blowing through fibs, blowing through everything else, and no type of VIX spike or any downside. So at the wait for a signal, we did have a pretty short-term hint of some type of downside, and then it immediately recovered on Friday when Powell came in pretty dovish. Right now, they're kind of focusing on a policy shift, probably gonna cut rates in September. Not sure if it's gonna be 25 basis points or if it's gonna be 50, but the real question is, is that because the economy is cratering or is it because they really believe in a soft landing and they believe they can start lowering rates right now without inflation ramping back up and destroying everything? So 
that's basically where we're at. And that's probably going to be the debate for the rest of the year. Is the Fed cutting because we're in a good spot or is it because the economy is deteriorating? You're probably going to see a lot of back and forth and lots of whipsaw, lots of ups and downs. It's going to be volatile. So be very careful. And then last but not least, we'll go over the VIX real quick. I don't have anything important for you this week. The VIX did not close back over that 921 EMA cloud. As you can see, the cloud, it came up to it, it rejected. It'll probably have to start closing back over 18 to see a real spike up to get back up to the 20s. This big candle really screwed up this chart, so it's kind of hard. I have to kind of zoom in to show you. If you want to see the VIX go higher, you kind of want to see the cloud trending back green. You want to see VIX back over the 921 EMA cloud as such, making higher lows, higher highs, kind of starting to get back up there right now kind of the opposite. We're trending under the 921 cloud. The cloud went back red because that means the nine is crossing back down the 21. Uh, the nine has to cross back up over the 21 to make the cloud go green as such. Also closed back under the 50 EMA. We do have the 200 EMA right here. You can see the dots. This is the 200 EMA. We are still over that. So that's a kind of a sign that volatility is still holding a little bit, but 1585 is very low guys. It's, I mean, anything under 20 is pretty low in my opinion. Right now, volatility looks pretty shaped to go back down. If I were to guess, this is probably gonna reject try to come back down to the 1440s. And then if the 1440s breaks, you have a multi-bottom low at 11.82, probably closer to 12. So if that starts flushing back down, that is kind of the all-time low for this period right now. And honestly, once it gets back to the 12s, you could definitely start looking for puts that are very cheap. Premiums will be dirt cheap if VIX comes back down to 12. But right now, I kind of have a head and shoulders, right? You had a spike, the big crisis spike, and another shoulder right here. So maybe it's trying to come back lower. Not exactly sure. I don't have a signal that it's going to go higher. I just have the fact that it's making a lower high. It rejected aggressively on Friday. And right now, we'll kind of have to see how the market digests Powell from Friday. Are they going to start selling stocks because they think the economy is cratering? And that's why the Fed is cutting? We'll have to see. But right now, they basically priced in Fed cuts the whole year. And that's why we've been going up along with AI and NVIDIA. It's basically been because of the speculation they were done hiking rates, they were going to start cutting, and things are going to go back to normal. Now we're at that point. We've priced in the rate cut. We're probably going to see it. The Fed has signaled they're going to do the rate cut or see a policy shift. Now that maybe means they're going to sell and do the opposite because they've already priced in the whole year for cuts. So we'll see how that goes. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I try to make it as quick as possible because I have to edit still. I'll try to get it out before midnight. I love you guys. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff, and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with a trading mentor today, completely free of charge.